guys, Max here, with a few more thoughts from the driver's seat. You know, the Beatles had this song, Happiness is a Warm Gun. And it sounds ludicrous, and I think that was the reason why they created that song. But the truth of the matter is, I am not ashamed to say that guns make me happy. I feel the most alive when I am shooting. And the funny thing is, you know, you go out to the range or your favorite shooting spot and everything's all loaded and ready to go. And you start narrowing your focus like a Zen master to that front sight post and the target beyond. And it's just kind of amazing what happens. It's a transformation, really. All my cares and concerns about life just disappear. And I got to say, it's really good therapy. I wish people on the left understood that. I wish they could for one minute understand how shooting is therapeutic. It's not harmful to anybody. And uh, it's something people really enjoy recreationally. But the problem is they're made uncomfortable by the fact that I have a firearm and they don't, and they don't want one. And, um, you know, that's just their mindset. But, you know, here's the thing. I have a constitutional right to have firearms. And my constitutional rights do not end where your supposed comfort level with firearms begins. We have to remember that as the gun community, that there is definitely a right we're talking about here, not just a privilege that can be taken away. If we abuse our rights, of course, that can be taken away, and I support that. But, you know, as, as a constitutionally protected right, we really don't have a lot to worry about. Our politicians are hamstrung by the Constitution and cannot take our guns away unless we let them. And so, you know, I think what, in, what we need to do instead of being uh, fearful, which I think a lot of us are, be honest, I think that the politicians use their words to back us into a corner and try to make us fearful. They threaten us with words over and over and over again. If you doubt what I'm saying, think about a phrase used by Obama a few years back. Now, this is a pretty insulting term, I'll tell you. But he put me and people like me, probably people watching this video, into this category he called bitter clingers. Do you like being called a bitter clinger? Do you think that's very nice? That's not language I would use to describe somebody. Not in pleasant company. Not unless I wanted to start a fight. It's a pretty much a mocking term that uh, diminishes something that we hold dear that formed the basis of our constitutional government. So a bitter clinger, really? Someone who stands up for democracy and is willing to protect this country from all threats, both, both foreign and domestic, is a bitter clinger. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm proud to be a bitter clinger. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hide from that. If that's what they wanna call me, fine. But that doesn't mean I'm going to change. They can mock and try to diminish my passion all they want. The truth is, they're ignorant and they don't understand. You know what else I was called recently? I was called a deplorable. But you know what? I'm a proud deplorable. I wish I had a t-shirt that said that, but I don't think I'd go that far. I'm not looking to start fights. I'm actually just li living my life exercising my constitutional rights, and I don't expect to let go of them any time in the near future, no matter who is president or what they call me. So this is Max Headspace 9mm saying, thank you for watching. And if you are a bitter clinger or a deplorable, thank you for being a part of the club. It's an elite club, I'll tell you that, and we need all the members we can get.